What happens at closing? When can we move in? I'm going to answer those questions and more in just a sec, so stick around. Hey guys, and welcome back. I'm Audrey Wise, realtor here in the Asheville area. And this is part five in a video series I'm doing on what a realtor does for a buyer. Today I'm going to talk about closing and beyond. One of the questions that we as realtors get asked a lot is, how quickly can we move in? I'm going to answer that one too. About three days before closing, the attorney is going to send you and the seller a copy of the final closing statement, sometimes called the settlement statement or the closing docs. And what this paper is, is it has all of the fees and expenses itemized out and attributes each one to either you, the buyer, or to the seller. I would encourage you to look over it and allow your realtor to look over it as well, because a lot of times there are mistakes that need to be addressed and fixed before the closing date. The day before or the day of closing is when you'll do your final walkthrough. This allows you to take one last look through the home and make sure that it's in as good of condition or better than the day you made the offer. It's also a time to check and see if all of the repairs were made to your satisfaction, if you and the seller agreed on any repairs. If you're satisfied with everything, you'll move forward to closing. The day of closing, you'll need to take a certified check with you, or you can wire the funds. The amount you need to take with you is found on the closing document that the attorney sent to you, and your realtor will also go over all that with you. Closing itself can take anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour and a half or so, depending on the title search, the type of property you're buying, and how you're paying. Some lenders require a lot more paperwork than others do. After closing, the attorney still has to go and record the deed at the courthouse. Typically they do this a couple of times a day, like once at lunchtime and then another time before five o'clock. But once they have recorded that deed, they will call you or your realtor and let you know that it has been recorded and then you get to pick up the keys. And at that point, you can start moving in. You can't move in before that because it's not legally yours until it's been recorded at the courthouse. I mentioned closing in beyond and the reason I mentioned beyond is because my relationship with my clients does not stop at closing. I check on them periodically and ask them if they need anything. And lots of times they'll end up calling me for one reason or another. A client back in January kept receiving packages that were meant for the previous owner. So we had to get that cleared up. A lot of times there's things that we need to talk about, but mostly I just like staying in touch with my clients. I typically will add them to my email list and then send them monthly or quarterly market updates so that they can keep updated on what's going on in the market. I also do client appreciation events and those are so much fun. One year we went to a brewery and had a picnic and we had a food truck there. Um, another time we did an ice cream social in the park. In fact, this winter I was gonna do a movie, um, rent out a private movie theater and do a private screening, but the coronavirus hit so we've had to postpone that. But I really enjoy staying in touch with my clients, doing fun things with them, and keeping them up to date on what's happening in the market. This concludes my mini series on what does a realtor do for a buyer. I hope you found it helpful. Would love for you to subscribe to my channel, check out some more videos while you're here. Please give me a thumbs up, it really helps me a lot, and so does subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.